Hi, and welcome back to A Postulant's Perspective. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, the death of your servant, St. Benedict, is quickly approaching. May we take this month of March to remember everything that he has left for us, including his example, and remembering to always turn towards you and trust in you to give us what we need to grow closer to you in relationship. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, and welcome back to week two of the St. Benedict Windows. I would like to start today with the temptation, which is the next one in line. In the temptation, an evil spirit puts into the mind of St. Benedict the image of a beautiful woman, and his emotions start going crazy on him, and he's almost le ready to leave behind the wilderness because of his emotions. And St. Gregory the Great tells us it's only by the grace of God that Benedict comes back to himself and realizes how temporary and ridiculous this temptation really is. And then Benedict gets a little extreme and he throws himself into a thorn bush naked and rolls around for a while. And of course when he gets up he's in quite a bit of pain and decides that that temptation is not really the best idea. Like I said, a little extreme. But the point is that, well, at least the point that I found, was that God gave him the grace to come back to himself. So no matter what temptation we face or difficulty we face, God is always there for us. And he will give us the grace to come back to ourself, to understand that it's only a temptation, it's only temporary, and God is eternal. And so if we can focus more on God and less on the temptation, and hopefully we don't have to go to the extreme that St. Benedict did, we can look towards God and towards eternal life with him. The next window in line is the poisoned cup. And shortly after the temptation, a whole community of monks come to St. Benedict and ask him to be their abbot because their abbot had died. Now St. Benedict knows that his lifestyle is too difficult for others and that he would be too strict for this community and tries telling them so, but they persist. And St. Benedict gives in and becomes their abbot. And of course, like he said, they thought he was too strict. So they get together and they plan to destroy him by killing him with poison. Great idea, right? So one night at dinner, they take the glass pitcher that he uses for his wine and they poison the wine. And as St. Benedict says the sign of the cross, the pitcher, of course, shatters. And the, the poison wine falls, you know, spills everywhere. Anyway. This is interesting, or what I find interesting in this, is that it's when the glass shatters that St. Benedict can actually see clearly. So when the glass is whole, containing the poisoned wine, everything looks fine, everything looks normal. But when St. Benedict says the sign of the cross and asks for a blessing from God, the glass shatters, and St. Benedict sees it for what it really is. And this makes me think of how many times I have looked at things wrong, or I have not been able to find God in a situation, and I know that it's not right, but I can't quite put my finger on it, and I'm so set in my ways and stubborn, and all of a sudden, it's like the glass breaks. And I understand what I'm supposed to understand. It all comes to me, and 
God gives me the knowledge of knowing what is true and what is right and what comes from God. So let us always be open to God showing us the truth and sharing with us the knowledge that we may be able to follow as Saint Benedict and see the evil within. The third window that we can talk about today, or the third window I would like to talk about today, is called the water from the rock. Now on this one, Benedict, obviously after those monks tried to kill him, he left. He went out on his own again, and slowly people started coming. They would bring young children, or there would be some adults that would come to St. Benedict seeking instruction. And he ended up building another monastery, which was much better than the last one. But it was on a mountain. And in order to get water, they had to walk all the way down the mountain to get water from a stream and then carry it all the way back up again. And one day, the monks went to St. Benedict and they told him that it was an impossible task, that they could not live there any longer. And they asked that St. Benedict look for somewhere else. And he told them to come back the next day. And he went up the mountain and he took one of his apprentices, um, who later becomes a saint, St. Placid. But he takes St. Placid up with him, up to the top of the mountain, and he prays, and he takes the three rocks, stacks one on top of the other, and then he goes back down the mountain. And in the morning, when the monks return to St. Benedict, he tells them to go back up the mountain and there will be three rocks, dig a hole, and water will come out. And so they do, and of course it does. Now. This one I find interesting because St. Benedict trusted that the Lord would give them what they needed. He went up, he prayed, he knew that God would give them water and that the place that they were was where they were meant to be. And I don't know why, but the story of Abraham and Isaac came to mind. And it might be funny, but we normally overlook the Isaac part of it and look more at the Abraham part, how he was willing to sacrifice his son. But sometimes I think about Isaac. Isaac, who is carrying the wood, who's doing the hard labor. He knows that there's something not right. And he trusts his father, Abraham. And so he asks him and he says, Father, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham says, God will provide. He listens to Abraham and trusts in our Heavenly Father. He knows that God will provide. So when Abraham gets to the top of the mountain, Isaac doesn't fight with Abraham when he's going to sacrifice him. If he did, Isaac was such a young man and Abraham was so old that Isaac could have overpowered him but he trusted also that God would provide. And he did. And so that makes me think of this water with the rock, that if we only trust in the Lord, even if it seems hopeless, even if it seems that we might as well give up and start somewhere new, that God will always provide and take care of us. So in closing, let's once again ask St. Benedict, pray for us. Thanks, and until next week, bye.